Our new sail is sail number 195. We have over 550 ancient coins. Many of them are spectacular coins, but a lot of them are from our inventory of around 5,000 attributed ancient coins, and these are selections from that, including Gallienus with his many animal reverses. One of our more spectacular coins is an Osgrave weighing 229 grams from Apulia in the city of Lucilla. On the obverse is a portrait of Apollo, and on the reverse is a cock, better known as a rooster. This is the finest that we have ever had, and the first time we've ever had one, and we'll probably never have one again. Hello, lot nine is one of my personal favorites in the entire sale. It's a coin from Syracuse, Sicily, and was minted circa 400 to 370 BC. Dionysius I, whose dates were 432 to 367 BC, considered both a tyrant or king, depending on which ancient source you read, was in power and capturing many cities within present-day Sicily. Additionally, Dionysius fought to keep any Carthaginian influence outside of Sicily. He was considered to be a horrible person, but effectively made Syracuse one of the strongest powers of the Western Greek colonies during the height of his reign. Dionysius was a lover and patron of the arts, and it's said that Plato visited him several times. The obverse of this coin shows Arethusa, the mythological nymph goddess of water. She was the daughter of Nereus, who fled her home in Arcadia in order to escape the river god Alpheus, who fell in love with her. She fled under the sea and eventually came up as a water fountain on the island of Ortigia. She was worshipped subsequently in Ortigia for this reason. Interesting to note, Dionysius also built a wall around the island of Ortigia, so his association with the city was strong. The reverse shows a mythological scene of Hercules fighting the Nemean lion. This popular mythological scene was one of the ten labors of Hercules. Our coin was part of several illustrious auctions and well-respected collections spanning over 100 years. Particularly noteworthy is the M. Robert Jameson collection, a member of a Parisian banking family who is of Scottish descent. He was a dedicated collector of ancient coins who is generally thought to have assembled the finest collection of Greek coins at that time. Hi, my name is Laura Wakeland and I'm with the World Coins Department at Harlan J. Burke Limited. Today I'd like to talk to you about box tollers. Box tollers are tollers that have been split into two halves and then hollowed out so that little miniature pieces of art can be hidden inside. The origins of the box toller began in the German state of Augsburg in the 1600s. Artisans of the day could paint portraits of loved ones, racy portraits, and elaborate paintings that tell stories. The owners of the box tollers could then take them to the opera or have them laid out at dinner parties as conversation pieces. I have a couple of exceptional box tollers in this 195th buyer bid sale. The one I'd like to talk more about at this time is lot number 563. First, I must say that oftentimes box tollers have lost the artwork inside, so finding one with the artwork still inside and intact is a rare thing. The box toller I'm going to talk about is composed of 16 hand-painted paper rondelles. The toller itself is an Augsburg Ferdinand III coin in very fine condition. The paper rondelles are vibrant in color and in excellent condition. The theme is of German life among the elite. The title, Eine Kapellation, suggests a play on words, as this is a kind of coupling, but at a wedding. You also have here words, Eine Jungfrau im Garten spazieren, which is saying a young woman is strolling in the garden, but Jungfrau can be translated as virgin as well. In the inside of this coin, you have one side a maid ready for Hochzeit, or marriage, and the other side you have two men, one loosely referred to as a rabble rouser or instigator, and the other man who looks to be a man of church entitled a messenger. This box toller is truly stunning. I invite you to take a closer look at this and many other offerings on our website at hjbltd.com. What we have here is a bell crotter, 
Uh, basically, if you turn it upside down, it's the shape of a bell. And this is used for mixing wine and water. This is Attic Red Figure, 450 BC, and this is by the Telos Painter. Uh, what's interesting about this vase is that it's used for mixing wine and water, so we have representation of Dionysus, who is the god of wine. And followers of Dionysus were satyrs and menads. So here we have three menads dancing with two satyrs. And uh, you can see even in some of the action where some of the menads are actually pulling at their outfits or the satyr here pulling at the outfit there. Um, and when, another interesting thing about this vase is we have the menads holding thyrsoses, which are staffs with pine cones, which were also used in the worship of Dionysus. And they were, they represented pleasure, enjoyment, prosperity, and fertility. Um, so we have a wonderful vase from an excellent period with great iconography, um, you, you know, used to mix wine and water and with Dionysus as the general scene. If there's any other information you want to know about the space, uh, visit our website. In the map section of our buyer bid catalog, you will find three maps by John Huygen van Linschoten. These maps were all in his 1596 edition of Itinerario. For much of the 16th century, the Portuguese had a monopoly on trade with the East Indies. The English and the Dutch had no real good idea as to how to get over there and what were the best ports and bays to stop over on their journey. While working as a personal secretary to the Portuguese Archbishop of Goa, from 1583 to 1589, Linschoten obtained numerous maps and documents from various Portuguese sources. In 1589, while traveling back to Portugal from Goa, his ship was pursued by an English fleet and lost its cargo during a storm while anchored off the Azores. Linschoten spent two years recovering the cargo and, pre and preparing his notes from his time in Goa. Those notes would be used to publish his book, Itinerario. With the publication of Itinerario, Jan Linschoten detailed a route in which could be used for the English and Dutch to reach the East Indies and essentially changed the course of history forever. These three maps show Southeast Asia, the southern portion of Asia with the Indian Ocean, India, the Arabian Peninsula and the Horn of Africa, and the western coast of Africa from Guinea down to present-day Cape Town.